Well, hey everybody, welcome to our online services today for North Park Community Church. My name is Pastor Matt Loveday, and today I am being a, can you guess what I am? This might give you a little hint. You see this guy here? This is a sheep, so that makes me, I guess, a shepherd. That's right. You know, a shepherd is someone who looks after the sheep, who feeds them, who protects them, who cares for them. And you know, the Christmas story actually has a great part in it about shepherds. Did you know that? That shepherds were one of the first people in the whole world to hear the amazing news that Jesus had been born. You see, it was late at night and the shepherds were out in their fields and they were looking after their sheep. And as they were caring for them, watching over them and protecting them, something really incredible happened. The sky lit up, and not just with stars. The sky lit up with angels. Angels who were singing and bringing a message that Jesus had been born. Shepherds are so important to the Christmas story. And so as we come together today to hear the Christmas story again. Today, I want you to think like me. You don't have to dress like me, but I want you to think like me and think like a shepherd. What would it have been like to have all these angels appear and give you this wonderful message that Jesus was born? So enjoy today's story from the Bible, and I will see you later on as we wrap up our time together today.
out there. I'm Haley, and I can't believe it. We are so close right now. All of the hustle and bustle and shushle has led to this. Is shushle a word? Oh, it's Christmas! Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. We have so many reasons to celebrate, am I right? Christmas cookies, visiting with family you only see once a year, singing carols 24 seven, and of course, the presents. So, so, so much to celebrate, but you know, and I know, the biggest reason to celebrate this holiday season. Bigger than the cookies and the songs, and yes, even the presents. It's a story you've probably all heard before, but if you're like me, you never get tired of hearing it. So let me just grab a cookie, pull up a chair, and get ready for the amazing story of Christmas. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, Chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. Less than a year before, the angel Gabriel had told Mary that she would have a baby. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son. You must call him Jesus. He will be great, the son of the Most High God. But instead of preparing their home for a brand new baby, Mary and her husband Joseph found themselves with different plans. <laughs> By order of Caesar, everyone must go at once to their hometown to be counted. Joseph's family came from the town of Bethlehem, many days journey over rough roads. We can't go anywhere right now. You're about to have a baby. I can have a baby in Bethlehem just as well as right here. Mary and Joseph likely knew the words of the prophet Micah, recorded hundreds of years before. Bethlehem. You might not be an important town in the nation of Judah, but out of you will come for me a ruler over Israel. Well, all right. I'll pack the swaddling clothes. The journey was difficult, but at last, Mary and Joseph neared Bethlehem. My Aunt Lydia will have a room for us, or cousin Eli. Is Bethlehem always this busy? No, it's usually, you know, how still we see thee lie. I guess everyone's come home. There's Aunt Lydia's. Unfortunately, none of Joseph's relatives had any room to spare. Terribly sorry, but my house is already packed to the rafters with your third cousins. It was the same everywhere Mary and Joseph checked. I don't have one single cubit of space where someone hasn't already plunked a sleeping bag. Joseph, we just need a place. Now hold your horses. I mean, your donkey. And, uh, well, if you want to stay there too, um, well, pff, it's yours. Oh, no, we couldn't. We'll take it. Mary and Joseph settled in with the animals in lots of clean, fresh straw. At least it's warm. And soon, Mary's baby was born. Is he supposed to be so wrinkly? <laughs> Every new baby looks like that. He's perfect. Mary wrapped her baby up tightly in clean strips of cloth and laid him on fresh straw in the animal's feeding trough. Mary and Joseph weren't the only ones up late that night. In the field outside of Bethlehem, a ragtag group of shepherds were taking care of their sheep. It's so quiet out here. How do you stay awake? Well, whatever you do, don't count the sheep. Suddenly, light blazed into the darkness. A brilliant angel appeared. Huh. I'm awake. I'm awake. Do not be afraid. I bring you good news. It will bring great joy for all the people. Well, bless my soul. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. Here is how you will know I'm telling you the truth. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth and lying in a manger. 
as the shepherds gazed in awe, an entire angel choir from heaven filled the sky with glorious song. May glory be given to God in the highest heaven, and may peace be given to those he is pleased with on earth. Then, just as suddenly as they arrived, the angels disappeared. The sky grew dark, and the stars shimmered faintly again. Wow, that doesn't usually happen. Should we go to Bethlehem? <laughs> you bet. The Lord himself just told us. Leaping up, the shepherds headed across the rough fields for the little town of Bethlehem. I see a light. There at the edge of town. Out of breath, the shepherds arrived at the place where Mary and Joseph were staying. What should we do? Go ahead and knock, young'un. A man with tired eyes and a big smile opened the door. Is this... Uh, is, there, is there a baby here in a manger? How did you know? Big choir of angels. <laughs> okay then, come right in. Inside, a woman knelt beside the rough feeding trough. <laughs> she turned as the shepherds entered, careful not to crowd. He's just like a baby lamb. It's all just like the angel said. The shepherds were so excited that when they left, they couldn't keep the news to themselves, but shouted it everywhere. Praise God. He's given us a savior. A brand new baby, right here in Bethlehem. Everyone who heard the shepherds was amazed, but Mary kept everything that had happened in her heart like a wonderful treasure. In the beginning, when God said, let there be light, he already knew that one day the world would need to be rescued. Because the world can be dark sometimes. People can be hurtful to one another. Sickness can shut things down. Where can we turn when the world gets dark? The shepherds watching over their flocks at night over 2,000 years ago may have wondered the same thing. And then the angels came and their glory shone all around. They spoke of good news of great joy that would be for all the people. God had sent a savior, a baby, but no ordinary baby. This was God's own son, and he would grow up to teach people a better way to live. He would perform miracles and heal people who were sick and hurting. He would give his life to save the lost and broken. This baby, born on a dark night in Bethlehem, was the light of the world. Jesus is the reason we can truly be alive. He's the reason we celebrate. So this Christmas, while you're singing songs, gathering with your family, and opening presents, remember this one thing. Celebrate because God sent a savior. I told you it was a bigger reason to celebrate than the presents you get. Jesus was already God's biggest present. Merry Christmas! I hope you have a wonderful celebration. Welcome back, everybody. What a great, incredible story that is. The story of Christmas, that God loved the world so much that he sent Jesus to be born in Bethlehem to come and be with us. And you know, this Christmas, I hope you and your family have a wonderful Christmas season. I hope you enjoy opening up all the presents. I hope you enjoy eating all that amazing food. But more than anything, I hope that you and your family take some time to think about the shepherds and think about the message that the angels gave, that Jesus, the King of Kings, God's own son, is born and given to us. That truly is amazing news, news that changes absolutely everything. So Merry Christmas to you, 
I pray that you have a happy holiday and let's close our time together in prayer. God, thank you that you love us so much, that you love the whole world, that you sent your only son, that if we choose to believe in him, we would never perish, but we would have everlasting life. We are so happy, just like those shepherds, on that first Christmas day to hear this news that you love us so much that you came to us to rescue us and to save us. We love you, Jesus. Amen. All right, everybody, thanks so much for joining me today, and I can't wait to see you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye.